y'all, what's up? It's Taylor, and I am back today with another book chat. Super cute today. Today we're going to be talking about Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass, which is the fourth book in the Throne of Glass series. Um, the last book came out like three days ago. I'm trying to catch up as much as I can, staying off social media the whole nine yards. Um, so I'm really excited about getting into this book. Um, I'm going to a Halloween party tonight. That is why my makeup is different or the fact that I'm wearing makeup at all. It's probably like, what is she doing? I rate this past book a... What's in the middle, like in between an A minus and an A plus? Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> this book is so good. These just keep getting better and better and better. And I really just like don't know what to say about it. It's becoming a lot. There's not a lot I can tell y'all about this book um, without just giving you spoilers because it is the fourth book in a series. So if you haven't read the first three to tell you anything about this book would spoil it for you. So like I said in my previous book chat about the third book in the series, this story follows a girl that has had ups and downs, rounds abouts and all kinds of stuff in her life in a high fantasy world that was uh, created by Sarah. And it is great. There is all different types of relationships, um, platonic and otherwise. There's great different characters. And the females in this series are grade A kick-ass. So, if you're into that kind of thing and you haven't read it yet, go read this series, catch up, read this book if you've only read the first three, and come back so you can chat with me about it. But until then, unless you want to hear my review that is going to have spoilers in it, you need to click off now. But if you're cool with that, keep watching. I don't know why you are. You're going to ruin it for yourself. But this part's going to be for people that have, one, already read the book, or two, don't care about spoilers. Who are you people? I don't know. But let's get into it. Okay, guys. I, um, what the heck. I don't know what to say about this book series. In general, I don't know what to say about this specific book. It is wild. It is crazy. What is happening? I don't know. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to go by character and not timeline so this video doesn't end up just be being like uh, me telling you the entire story when clearly if you're still here you've already read the book most likely. What I'm going to start out with is the person that if y'all watch my videos stresses me more than anyone which is Kale. I do not know how my opinion has changed so much from A to D, I guess, where I'm at right now with him. I was, like, so in love with his character in the beginning of this series, and now he makes me want to bang my head against a wall because it's like, what are you doing? You literally have sat by and just let everything happen, which I still can't really get over my opinion about that because... In the first book, I really thought of him as like a big, strong warrior. Blah, 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 blah. And then as time went on, I was like, really? He's not had to do anything for me to think that? He's just physically large? So, really, he's just a big baby. Aelin finally gets back and Carol's like, mm, let me read you to filth. And it's like, you're the worst. You're a monster. What? Could you have done to help us while you were over there gallivanting with your prince? Bring up Rowan one time. Do it one time. I wish you would. That wasn't a great, you know, start to the whole thing. Dorian is still stuck in his dog collar. <laughs> it's like the bane of my existence. I have no idea what I'm going to do about this. Um, one, I can't do anything about it because... I'm three books behind and it's a little late. Also, I'm not the author of this book. So I'm just along for the ride like the rest of you. You get what I'm saying? Then we also find out that uh, Kale has a friend, a uh, ex-lover if you will, that he's like partnered up with and she um, pretty much is Cat and Separty. Can't remember what her name is off the top of my head. Let's just call her Ness because I know it's not Nesta and I know it's not Nessie because this is not... Um, Court of Thorns and Roses, and this is also not um, Twilight. So we'll just call her Ness. It's something like that. I'll put it down here right now. Okay, so she's interesting. Um, I think that she is what I wished Kale would be. 
enough said. Let's go on. She goes to get him out, like we all know, and then he's like, don't kill Dorian. And she's like, mm, well, I'm his true friend, and he would probably want me to kill him. So what happens? She goes and frees him and did it at the very end. Dorian rolls up because, you know, he has his dog collar on. So he's like technically not Dorian anymore. And he's like, where do you think you're going? And she's like, I'm going to give you a minute to become Dorian or else your head is going to get chopped off. And right as she's about to do it, I don't think she would have killed him, me personally, but she might have. Who knows? Ness just like, bing, gets her right with her little arrow thing. Talk about frustration. And the whole time... I'm just thinking, where is Rowan? Where is Rowan? Where is Rowan? She needs her ca carabin, car carabola, parabata. She needs her parabata because, like, this is a mess. Like, this is just a total mess, and she doesn't have the person that really can level her out and help her. And then she just is kind of in this shambles because she's also then ran into her keeper. I'll put his name down below. It's er, something. I forgot. It's, I don't know how to say it. Anyways, I'll put it right here right now. So she's been dealing with that. That's also an entire mess, which I understand I don't understand the full gravity of because I have not read Assassin's Blade. The moment that Rowan shows up, I shed a tear. And I do not cry. I shed a tear of pure joy, happiness, and relief. We can get back on track now because Rowan's here and he can get all these children in order. Like, the adult has arrived. Of course, I'm just like, oh my gosh, I ship y'all so much. This is my ship. I'm shipping it. You know? You get what I'm saying. We gotta figure out, one, either how to kill Dorian or two, save Dorian. Number one is probably gonna be most likely. Then, um, is it Liantha? That's not what her name is. Her, like, arch nemesis from when she's a kid is, like, the coolest character ever, which I was super excited about because she did need a girlfriend. Like, I know that she's, like, her own person and Aelin just, like, doesn't really mesh well with others, but, like, it was good for her to, one, make up on some, what seemed to me, like, petty stuff that I guess was explain further in Assassin's Blade and then her have somebody on her side and then Rowan of course because Rowan is like this is gonna sound stupid he reminds me of my husband in this one way my husband is very quiet does not speak but man when he does does he spill tea like drama queen 101 so Rowan shows up and is like okay um your new friend it's a shapeshifter. Your cousin is my friend's, my cronies or whatever, son. Like, this is all the things going on. It's like, damn, you just like weren't here and you show up and just telling everybody about their life. Like, rude. So that I thought was really sweet, their whole relationship and all that. So then they set out to get the uh, word key from her master. Okay. I know y'all read it if y'all are this far. If you haven't, too bad, so sad, whatever. When they met up with him and had that dinner at the very end, I cannot even explain to y'all the shock of that last scene. Like, hold on, let me read my text messages. As y'all know, they're all acting like they're playing each other or whatever, but all of her games she learned from him, so I'm always very skeptical. So he gives her her necklace that has the word key in it and da 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 and at the very end, slips one of the mother effing rings on her. And it's like, blink. And she's like, and he's like, say you love me. And she does it. And I'm like, dying inside. Like, you've got to be kidding me. They're finally pulling like half of this crap up. They got, or pulling it off, sorry. They finally have uh, Adi on. She's finally got her friend. And let me tell you, an actress, an actress they are. Because let me tell y'all that, oh, that whole scene, how they were acting like they still hated each other, was like impeccable, loved it, great. Like I've said in my previous videos, my sister-in-law and best friend are caught up on the series. They might not have read this last book that came out the other day. This is the chain of events that happened. Last night at 9.01 p.m., I text my best friend. He put the ring on her, all caps, 
All caps exclamation points. Let me see if you can, can you see this? I was dying, dying. And then I literally read two sentences later and was like, oh my bad, never mind. Anyways, and so they end up killing him, which I thought was really cool that she let her friend kill her master. But what I was confused about is the fact that they just weren't automatically like, okay, now you're not a slave and paid off all that stuff. I didn't understand that. So in the very end when she paid it off, I was like, yeah, duh. Amber died, so I'm going to try to remember where I left off. So now Rowan, Adion, Aelin, Kaol, Ness, and I can't remember what her name is, have all came up with a plan on what they're going to do to take down the towers. Magic will be gone and most likely in the process end up killing Dorian because they cannot figure out a way. Within all of that, um, their friend gets kidnapped and they figure out that they will be meeting up with the 13, Manon's 13, the King Dorian, and then um, also Manon's grandmother. And they're all coming together to meet. And so they realize that they have to go there to figure stuff out <laughs> and so they're like all right well clearly we gotta go save her they get there and they're all stealthy and all that jazz and the first person to make contact with Dorian is Manon and I kind of already know about this storyline ish a little bit and so I wasn't necessarily shocked but I thought it was the craziest thing that he just came out of like his shell let's just say that his came out of his collar there for a second because of i'm assuming because of manon and then they talked about her eyes being different so unless i skip right over something i don't fully understand what that is yet i guess manon has some kind of control because of her lineage over the princes inside i don't really know yet we'll just see so i'm just like ship it ready to go let's see so of course at the very end everybody's going their own way and kale decides to be an idiot and ends up instead of trying to save dorian or i guess that's what he's trying to do he's trying to kill dorian because he sees the light of day finally and is like yeah aelin was right this whole time Sh shock he runs into the 13 they all end up getting a fight rowan almost dies which i'm just like listen if we have another race situation here only four bucks in i'm have a problem Aelin and Manon are fighting to the death and what I think is so funny is that like while they're trying to kill each other they're appreciating the other one's fighting abilities like the fact that they're warriors and at the end Aelin comes and saves her because she says that she understands that her second feels the same way that she does about Roman so she saves her so now Manon owes her a life debt. Her way of making them even is she goes back and tells them that um she killed the people that attacked them not that they went free and then she also somehow gets into the city after her second tells her all that story about her life how sad was that i mean we all already knew her grandmother was the worst person ever but then to know that like everyone knew before she did and all this awful awful stuff you just realize that this is all building to hopefully man and eventually turning and working with Aelin and Dorian and Rowan and all of them. Aelin's super excited. They have to change the plan because now she knows that Dorian is still somewhere in there. That there is some way to save him. So they come up with this plan. They get the hellfire that they found in the tunnels. That of course goes awry. Sh shocker. Rowan the whole time is like, this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. And they're like, no, it's fine. And he's like, I'm not old. And I've loved this song for no apparent reason. I know this is a bad idea, but it goes along with it. And so, Kyle and Aelin think it's a great idea that they're just going to... It reminds me of the clip of when Jim showing Dwight about the bed bugs. And he's like, smell like this. That's how I imagine she walks in. And the king immediately is like, hello, Aelin. And she's like, oh, I didn't think you were going to know who I was. <laughs> that sped things up a little bit. So, Kyle finally does the right thing after completely just... He literally messes everything up. He can't do anything right. It's ugh, tragic, honestly. She takes the necklace, bolts, 
and Dorian runs after her, or the prince in Dorian's body runs after her, and the whole plan was really to get him away. And I think possibly that distance and was what helped Manon in the woods, or it was Manon or both, but maybe that distance is what helped him. And so they're battling it out, and he really does almost kill her. So she's almost dying, and Rowan can feel it, and she can feel Rowan almost dying, and Rowan saved by the what is it a go is it a ghost leopard? Is that what it's called? I mean, so, it's so awesome. Like this chick is a freaking ghost leopard, and it's she just saves the complete day because if you really think about it if well I think they could still could have saved the day but if she wouldn't have came in there would have been major major problems so finally the king finds Aelin and is like I killed Kaol and Doran's like say what and he's like I guess just the prince was gone and then he, he's there he's like you killed who and then they joined hands and then it's like Meow and just obliterate everything. I got nervous at first when they met their hands together and they talked about their magic. I was like, wait, is she doing the same thing that she did with Rowan? That's, you can't do that, right? The king in his, di in his dying moments then tries to tell them about the fact that he was possessed the whole time. And he's like, my son, my son. And they're like, nah, that's not how that's gonna work. So, the book ends with Dorian being the king and he's like, what am I supposed to do? And he's like, has major PTSD and Aelin's like, well, I gotta go back home and be the ruler of like where I rule. We can't just like stick together because we have two different countries that we have to rule. We can't just like all live happily ever after in this castle. So of course her entire court goes with her. So that's Rowan, Adion, Elle, I'm gonna just call her Elle because I forgot what her name is, Elle, which is made a lady of her own land that's overrun with ghost leopards <laughs> and the only people he has is Kel and Ness and they have to be sent somewhere else which was like mentioned in the book randomly not randomly because he's freaking paralyzed but the good thing is no one died other than the king and I love that last moment where Manon like swoops in and her and Braxis are on the side of the building and he just is like <laughs> That's what I imagine. I just imagine him being like, hello, I remember you. <laughs> so here are my predictions. Since no one died, everybody ended up fine. And this one didn't have a cliffhanger. It really was like a wrap it up kind of thing. It's what I would have assumed the end of a third book would have been. But I'm just basing that off of the end of like what... Um, like the mortal instruments like the first three were like their own little series and the last three were like their own little series and you just put them together and they made a full thing so i thought that that was an interesting way that she kind of put all that together i guess obviously i think aelin and rowan are gonna be king and queen or she's just gonna be queen and he's gonna stay a prince i don't know how that works um kale and ness are i guess together i really don't care about their relationship whatsoever not to be mean, I just don't. I'm heavily shipping uh, Dorian and Manon. What a great queen she would be. Like, if they could figure out how the witches and all the stuff at the end could, like, be one, and that would be great. Because I think that he is so polished and everything like that that he needs a rougher side. And I think that's why a lot of people shipped him and Aelin for so long. But Aelin needs somebody like Rowan. Where I think Dorian needs someone like Aelin and Manon's just like a different version of that. As you can assume, that leaves two main characters. And we all know that um, nobody has to be together, you know. They don't have to end up together. But I want to know which one Aelin's going to end up being with. Is it going to be Elle? Is she going to end up with one of the cronies? What's the deal with Lor Lorian, Lordian, what? <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about. And I guess we get to know more about them because it's like, okay, so is Aiden going to finally meet his dad? Is, when is that? I'm assuming it's all going to come into play in this next book and I cannot wait. This book was so good. I cannot rave about it enough. Um, but so this video is not just a thousand years long. I'm going to end it at that. So let me know what y'all thought down below. 
this is just getting crazy. This whole series is getting crazy and I love it so much. It's probably my second favorite series of all time. Right behind Mortal Instruments. And y'all, that's a compliment. Y'all know that's a compliment. So, um, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Or is it over here? Is it over here? Wh wherever. I'm trying to be better about making videos and uploading once a week. And all the rest of my social media is down in the description. I'll also put a link to my other Throne of Glass book chats. And that's it. And I've got to get reading this next book. It's, yeah. It's, we'll talk, we'll talk on the next one, okay? Until next time, don't forget to do what you